<clears throat> All right, what's up, everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me. We're going to hang out with this Geek Vape Aegis Mini for a little bit. It comes in a kit with the Cerberus Sub Ohm Tank, which we've talked about the Cerberus Sub Ohm Tank in the past, so I'm not going to spend so much time on that, but we are going to set that up later. And you get a box of parts of spare things and whatnots. <laughs> you get a spare coil head for the Cerberus Tank, as well as a micro USB charger. This is an internal battery mod. You don't pull any batteries in or out of this. You just charge it via the USB. Go away. As far as size specifications goes, we're looking at 78 millimeters top to bottom. The tank itself is 42.5 millimeters. Numbers and whatnot aside, it's a real small mod. It's a real small package, real small total package kit. Aegis line of mods are designed to be rough, rugged, super durable mods. They say this mod is dust proof, it is shock proof, it is IP67 waterproof, which IP67 waterproof means that you can submerge this in water about three feet deep for about 30 minutes before it's going to damage the mod. So it's not necessarily waterproof, but it's definitely water resistant. Like I said, yeah, it's a small little package. It's got an internal 2200 mAh or milliamp hour battery. It fires up to 80 watts. It does all of the temperature control functions, which I I do not use. I am a simple vapor. I just like wattage mode. So thankfully this does do wattage mode and it's real slick, man. This screen, nice and shiny, a little bit of a fingerprint magnet, but overall it's nice and shiny. It's engraved geek vape right there or engraved, I guess. This is all rubber. So it's kind of printed on the rubber, but it's a lot like the Aegis Legend full size. It's rubber around here. This is aluminum. And then you have this sort of sewn on faux leather or real leather. I'm not not really sure. It doesn't say anywhere. Sort of uh, styling on there, which is nice. Gives it a little bit of a uh texture. I find it's much more comfortable to hold this Aegis Mini if I hit the fire button with my thumb. It just seems to be the most ergonomic. I'm a guy that likes to hit the fire button with my finger like this and I don't know, it's just, it doesn't really matter. It's just a little bit more comfortable, I guess, to hit it with your thumb just because of the way that this is contoured, the way that your fingers kind of just wrap around this little leathery portion right here. It's the Aegis Mini, you know what I mean? If you've used an Aegis, if you're familiar with the Aegis, then you're going to be familiar with this. It's, it's the same basic idea in a smaller package. Standard issue, five on, five off. So we'll click this five times to turn it on. There you go. There's the screen. Nothing super revolutionary. It's just an LCD screen. It's going to tell you everything you need to know as far as wattage, voltage, resistance. If you give it three clicks, this little portion up here is going to highlight one, two, three. I know I don't have an atomizer. And then you can use these navigation buttons to go through kind of all of the modes and settings, custom TCRs. It's supports nickel, titanium, and stainless steel. We're gonna get this back to wattage mode because I like wattage mode. There's a curve mode if you wanna use it. And I apologize on screen, this just looks blasted out and washed out. There's no brightness adjustment on this screen. Normally when shooting video, I turn the brightness on the screen way down so you can see the display. This display is just bright and blinding and can't really kind of see what's going on. That's a bummer. But in addition to all of the temperature control stuff and all of the curve stuff, it does have wattage mode and it does have bypass mode. And really those are the only two modes that I personally use with this. One thing that I absolutely love, love, love about this Aegis Mini is how clicky the buttons are. The buttons are just so clicky. Here, I'm gonna hold these up to the microphone. I want you to hear how clicky these freaking buttons are. So yeah, there's really not a lot to see with this mod. One thing I did want to mention is it's a little bit top heavy. It's just a little bit top heavy. It doesn't have much weight to it anyway. It doesn't feel very substantial, but it definitely feels top heavy up here because of that big 510, you know, spring-loaded metal 510 connection on there. And it gets exacerbated every time you put a tank on here. It makes it feel even more top heavy. Obviously, I'm not counting that as like a con or something. It's not a negative 
negative thing. It doesn't ruin my vape experience being a little bit top heavy. I'm just pointing it out because it's something I noticed. So let's very quickly set up and fill this Cerberus tank. 810 compatible drip tip, one twist, and the notch is released. Got a nice little glidey AFC here on the bottom. There's your mesh coil head. When brand new tanks come from the factory, I like to pop out the mesh coil head and then replace it in there myself. Sometimes the factory tightens these down far too much and it'll actually compromise your O-rings and make it a little bit leaky on you. So I always pull this out and then just put it back in and keep it, you know, finger tight. Just gonna take some juice, prime up the coil head a little bit. And we're just gonna screw this all together. Boop. Fill up your tank. Top goes on with one quick little twist. All you have to do is engage those notches and yeah, there you go, Cerberus. We're gonna attach this to this little Aegis Mini. We're gonna get back out to normal view. Yeah, and we're gonna vape this thing. So yeah, man, I've been having a really good time with this Aegis Mini. The Cerberus tank is actually a pretty damn good little sub-ohm tank. It is easily one of, if not the best, like, pack-in sub-ohm tanks. You know how there's kits that come with mods in a sub-ohm tank, and the sub-ohm tank is usually... It's like, uh, it's like, it's like it was tossed in as an afterthought. It's like, oh, here's this great mod, and then we'll throw in like a, a kind of a cruddy sub ohm tank to go with it. This is not that cruddy sub ohm tank. The Cerberus is actually real nice. I don't love the bubble glass, but the coil head on the inside tastes good, or as good as one strip of mesh can taste. The airflow is smooth. The AFC is smooth. It's easy to fill. This is a damn good little pack in sub ohm tank. As far as the mod itself goes, like I said, it is a little bit top heavy, and again, Again, that's not like a negative thing. It's just something I notice, especially when I'm holding it. I notice that it it kind of becomes just a little bit top heavy the way the way that you hold it in your hand. It's honestly a rad little form factor. I like I said in the up close, I'm one of these guys that like to hit the button with my finger. If I have the option on a mod to hit the button with my finger, I will just because that's how I like it. But this particular mod, it's set up really for your thumb. It's just much more ergonomic that way. And like I also said in the up close, it's it's fairly lightweight, which can be a pro or con for some people. I like a little bit more heft, a little bit more, something a little bit more substantial. The Aegis Mini, as it stands, it feels a little, I don't know, light. But, I mean, it's given me plenty of power to this particular coil head. And the great thing about these Cerberus coil heads is they're a little bit higher of a resistance. This is a 0.3, so I don't need to run this much more than, like, 45 or 50 watts. It has a max output of 80 watts, and if you're not like taking full advantage of that, if you're down in like the 40 to 50 watt range, your battery's just gonna last a lot longer. This has a built-in 2200 ma or milliamp hour battery, and it charges via USB on the bottom of the mod, which to me is kind of a bummer. You can't really, I mean, you can use it as a pass-through, sure. Plug it in and keep vaping it, but what I like to do is I like to plug in my mod and then set it down while it's charging, and this is on the bottom, so you're gonna be plugging your USB into the bottom, and then you're kinda of gonna be just be laying it on its side while it charges. I know, that's a, that's a real super, super nitpick, right? But, it's still a thing. These are the things I think about. The USB connection does, though, have a full, like, rubber silicone enclosure on it. So it is very shockproof. It is very dustproof. And it is very water resistant. I wouldn't vape underwater, which you couldn't do anyway. I mean, technically, you couldn't do that. But if you were to drop this in the sink or spill water on it, it, it would be fine just shakes it off. So real quickly, a few things I didn't mention. With the bubble glass, the Cerberus tank is five and a half mils, and with the straight glass, it does come with a straight glass option. It's a two mil, and I'm assuming that's for TPD. USB charger on the bottom is a two amp USB charger, and it'll charge real quick. It'll get up to 80% full in about 30 minutes, which is pretty rad. It does also use that Geek Vape AS chipset, and it is it's fast. It's a quick little chip. It has a full temperature control suite on it. I don't use any temperature control, but for wattage mode, it is real quick and real responsive. I do that test where I try to press the button before anything happens, and it's literally impossible on this. You press the button and it fires. You press the button and it fires. It's, it's real quick, real responsive, and I really like that. And I know I mentioned it in the up close, but I want to mention it again. These clicky buttons are my favorite clicky buttons that I've ever clicked of any button that's been clicky ever, ever. 
Can you can you hear the click? It, it's just a it's just a wonderful, joyful experience to click these buttons. It's one of the reasons that I really like this mod. When I see it sitting there, and I go, "Yeah, I'm gonna click that button now." So let's get down to brass tacks. You're gonna need your vape budget hands if you wanna check out the Aegis Mini Cerberus kit combo. Eh, not really. Clicking around the internet, I found it anywhere from like 35 to $40 range, which is, I mean, that is that is a reasonable price for a full kit. If you buy this particular kit, all you will need to buy afterward is liquid to put in it. This comes with everything. There's an internal battery, you get a tank with a sub-ohm coil heads, it's a full, full, full kit. I have a real special place in my heart for smaller battery mods like this. I love using them with like, with things like mouth to lung tanks or mouth to lung RDAs. Like my K-Fun Light Plus was living on here before the Cerberus was living on here. I just enjoy having little mods like this. And honestly, if, if you're looking for your first vape kit, something that's accessible, something that's real easy to use, Geek Vape Aegis Mini Kit. I mean, dude, it could be exactly what you're looking for. So, if, I mean, if we're going to play the Aliens game where they come and take everything I have, and I have nothing left to vape, is the Geek Vape Aegis Mini Kit something I would seek out and buy? Here's the thing. I'm going to say what I always say. I'm actually going to say yes, because I really like this Cerberus tank. I don't want the I Aegis Mini by itself without the tank. I would want this as a kit because I am thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying this Cerberus uh, sub ohm tank and I really like this little mod. It's just a cool pocketable little ergonomic little clicky button banger Links aren't allowed in the description, so you're gonna have to use your Google foo, but that's what I got for today Everybody thank you so much for watching and as always yeah, dude, let's keep on vaping Stop banging! It just seems to be the most ergonomic. I'm a bagamic.